Can one number make a big difference? Today we're comparing a 15 series Martin versus a 16 series Martin. I'm going to tell you what I think is the very best value and the differences between the two, so stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Coop Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to learn how to become an Alamo Music Insider and support the channel, check out the link in the description below. So Cooper, you've got a 15. Stream I've, master. I've got one up on you, 16. And we're going to talk about what, always <laughs> what's the same. I'm always flexing. I'm always got to do the... the uh, Parking the, your truck next to mine and stuff. It's bigger. You got the 16. I got the 15. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not compensating. Anyway, so we're going to be talking about... We're both like short guys, so you yeah, know, it's whatever. whatever. Um, so we're talking about Martin guitars, and you know the 15 and 16 series, much like the 17 series, they've kind of been stalwarts for a long time, very popular because they represent huge value in the US made guitars. Mm -hmm. These are both made in Nazareth, PA, at the Martin factory, right? They're both all solid wood construction, and, uh, and they've got a lot going for both of them, but they are a little bit different. That 15 series that you're holding is a Streetmaster, like you said, mm -hmm. it's 1399, what I'm holding is the 16 e which doesn't have a Streetmaster variation of it, so it doesn't look like it got dragged behind one of our trucks. Yeah. And this one is $16.99. Um, so what's different and what's similar about them? They're both triple O's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yours is? Um, all mahogany. So mm -hmm. very cool. And I think you said this is a longer scale, correct? It is. And I'm just, this, I'm, get, I'm getting on my soapbox, okay? Because I have, I have an issue with this at Martin. That should be called an OM. If you ask Martin what the difference between a triple O and an yeah. OM is, they will tell you that an OM is a longer scale length. What's the difference between a triple O 28 and an OM 28? The OM 28 has a longer scale length and slightly different bracing, but it's scale length until you get to a 15 series. And then they call it triple O. Why? Because. Do they have an OM under the 18 series? Do they have an OM 18? Yeah, I think. And under that, do they have anything called an OM or is it all triple O's under that? All, I think it's all triple O, triple O, double O, yeah. What are they doing? So I think, you know, it's one of those things, someone at some point called it a triple O and it's stuck. So it it's is whatever. what it is. But it is a longer scale length, it's good to know. It is a 25.4, instead of 25 mm -hmm. and a half inch scale length, and it features a narrower nut. It's one and 11 sixteenths, which I can tell when I'm playing. Yeah. Because I'm used to a slightly wider nut. And it looks as though they took like a little 120 grit or <laughs> something does. to all the edges. I don't know where on the street, the master that happens would. to all of my headstocks when I play for 20 years. What all are you talking about? Yeah, so as you can tell, this is, I guess, Martin's version of relicking. Well, <laughs> sort of, because I'm gonna tell you, in the custom shop, they actually do like honest yeah. to goodness relicking options. Um, I've always thought the the marketing behind that was was hilarious. I'm just gonna put it out there. It's like, look, if you are of an older generation who's always wanted to have a Martin of your own but you won't have the time to put in the damage. <laughs> that is bleak. <laughs> That's what I have to say. You know, if you read between the lines, they're basically saying, you're gonna be dead long before you get a chance to yeah. damage this thing, let us do it for you, and then you enjoy 20 years. Yeah. So. And it's been somewhat burnt <laughs> to a crisp, you know. So it's a interesting look. I think it's look. supposed to, to show wear of the like finish and like dirt getting into it and yeah. stuff. It's cool, you know, it's cool. It's an aesthetic that get, you can leave it or take it. If you don't like the Streetmaster aesthetic, you can always just buy the 00015M. Yeah. Which, it, so here's what's weird. That's technically more. Yeah. So they're charging you less to do more to the guitar because they're having to do finish work. Yeah. So I don't quite get that. But it's a cool look. Yeah. You know what I liked about the guitar? When I took it out of the case, there was something I noticed immediately. I want to see if you picked up on it. It smells really good? No. Oh, well, it does. Just That's because I had it under my arm earlier, and oh, I have this okay. new Dove for men's deodorant. It smells so good in this guitar. <laughs> it's that, yeah, go on. It, the lightness. Yeah, it is very, It's very extremely light. light. Look, feel that one. I've always found that these are pretty heavy for some reason. Well, um, there's pickup in it, and I think it's the tone wood used, but that is extremely light. Yeah, this, this is a comfortable guitar. It gives me the same feeling as, like, other 15s mm -hmm. with the mahogany. It's a nice, light, airy feeling. 
Um, and I think it informs kind of how you play and the type of stuff that you'll gravitate towards yeah. playing. Um, it gives me, even though it's not like he was a big Martin guy, but it gives me sort of like a Robert Johnson kind of vibe, you know? Um, yeah, I've just, always gotten that feel from him. Yeah, yeah, I dig it though. But that one um, is the exact opposite. It is very different. It's more in line with kind of a traditional Martin, uh, like we'd see from a 28 series. So this is the 00016 E. Now that means it does have a pickup system. It's a Fishman Sonotone. Both of these come in soft cases, gig bags basically. Um, they both have open gear tuners. That's the classic kind of plastic button ones. Look really cool. Eventually that might crack and then you just have to replace the whole tuner. Uh, these, you also don't have screws to replace them, but they last longer. They're both, I think, these are Grovers. Are those Grovers? These are non-branded. Non-branded, okay. So these are Grover open back tuners. Uh, this is traditional Martin with the dot inlays. It's a 24.9 inch scale length, so a little bit shorter scale length, which you can feel, and the nut width is wider. It is one and three quarter inches. So in some ways, I would think that I would be more comfortable on this, but I'm actually more comfortable on that. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Now the top is Sitka Spruce. It's got your pick guard, your classic kind of herringbone uh, rosette there. The top is glossed, and then the back and sides are Granadillo. And Granadillo is a tone wood we've seen on some limited edition tailors that I've played and really liked in the past. I really like it as a tone wood. It's got a lot of rich bass and some nice overtones likened to rosewood as we typically would, um, but with without that scooped mid-range. So yeah. maybe maybe a lot like Ovencol in ways. Yeah. Um, overall, though, again, good value. $16.99, you're getting a US made all solid wood Martin in this 16 series with a pickup, with a case, and it's got a nice nice tone to it. Yeah. Um, that one's got a very, very different tone. There is no pickup, which is part of the reason it's so light, but very, very different tone profile from the all mahogany body. Bracing is different between the two as well. That is straight bracing. This is scalloped bracing, both 5 16 inch bracing but that one doesn't have the scalloping. Both simplified dovetail neck joints, so they're very similar kind of basic blueprints with differences based upon the series. Yeah. So I'm gonna demo them. I'm curious what you think before we go into that demo, each will sound like. Just looking at them, just feeling both of them. What are your thoughts before we give up the goods? Um, so kind of like I said, when I feel a, and all of it informs how I feel that. So um, all the satin, very light, all mahogany. Um, weirdly, only one dot on the 12th. Yeah, I don't it's, understand it's odd. Yeah, on this here. one has two. Um, but I, you know, that's that three hundred dollars. Yeah, <laughs> you get one more dot. Um, you know, uh, this kind of guitar makes me think of old school blues, slide, singer songwriter folk stuff. Stuff that you can imagine this guitar in a black and white photo. You know, um, that guitar I have had more experience playing because it seems like that this is just a very popular guitar in the store and a lot of people that aren't ready to dive all the way into like an 18, 28, 35. Um, it, I feel like that's the, a really, really nice option for anybody that wants just classic Martin tone. Yeah. So on that one, I'm expecting the, the full bodied Martin chord strummer this one feels like finger style blues on like a you know a 78 rpm record or something but eager to hear all right well let's see if he's right check out the demos we'll see you on the other side
So there you have it, and I'm just gonna go out and say, yeah, you pretty much mm. nailed it right on the head. I think it's spot on. Um, yeah, the way I approach and think of these two guitars is very much in line with what you were saying. I, I like to think of this as a poor man's 28. It's a poor man's triple O 28. So it's got the same bracing, it's got similar tone woods, it's not rosewood, but it's kind of in that vein as far as response. Uh, it's got the same you know, neck profile, same nut width, uh, you know, you've got, you get a pickup in it, of course you don't get a hard shell case, but you're paying less than $2,000 for a US made Martin. That guitar on the other hand is like the other 15 series and I just have a soft spot in my heart for them. Yeah. So, and yeah, I think the thing that I think of all of the time is finger style blues. Yeah. With these guitars. It is it is my happy place often playing that style of music. I think so a few different things. First off, sixteen series, there's a GPC as well. Mm -hmm. So the GPC sixteen E is I'd love to do a video on that sometime soon. I don't think we have any right now. Actually because... I think I just saw one downstairs that just came in. Okay. Well, we say good. this because you know, pandemic Martins have been few and far between. Yeah. So <laughs> when something comes in the warehouse, I'm like, oh. The, uh, the GPC has been one of the more surprising ones to me in recent memory. Like, I expect, you know, I'm a Martin snob, I guess, a little bit. So I want an 18 or a 28. And then I picked up the 16s, the triple O, and the GPC, and it's like, it sounds really, really good. I didn't you know? used to like the 16s. I do now for some reason. Yeah. I well, used we didn't to carry them. Prejudice against them. For years, when I would do the yeah. ordering, we didn't carry them. I didn't. They had silver binding and stuff, and I, I just, I didn't like them. Yeah. And then they redesigned them, and then I said, okay, we're going. We did videos. We carried them, and we can't sell enough of them. They're great yeah. guitars. So. I think of that one as well. Is like if you have yourself an heirloom Martin that you're playing shows, you're traveling, maybe you don't want to bring your you know, mm -hmm. early 20th century, you know, triple O 28 with you. This will give you a similar tone. It's not going to give you, you know, your 28 tone, but yeah. it, it'll feel comfortable and feel like home if you don't want to bring your crazy, you know, 28 or something with you. And it sounds really good. But if you're playing the Ryman Theater in Nashville, according to Martin's copy on their website for this guitar, this is the guitar for you. Oh, you got to do it. It's what I always see people playing at the Ryman with. Strangely enough, other due to your videos, um, the 15 SM, basically 15 series. We can't keep it in stock. Yeah, we can't keep in that. stock because they're all great. This one's nice because it's a little, little different, a mm -hmm. little bit of a change to check out. But pretty much all the 15s and 16s, it's like we can make videos all day if we had them, actually. Yeah. So this is special because we actually had some in stock. So here's a takeaway I have for this is I, I think this is the more versatile guitar. I always say that with spruce top guitars. There's more dynamic range. You can cover a whole bunch of different stuff. You can play blues on this if you want. It does it just fine. You've got a pickup system. You do anything that's open mic and you, you want to buy a guitar and have it ready to go. This will meet those needs. But I like that guitar better. I, I love the lightness. I lo love the resonance of it. I picked it up and I really enjoyed playing the things I was playing on it. But here's the weird thing. This is a shorter scale with a wider nut width. I should be more comfortable on this guitar, but I wasn't. I was more comfortable on that guitar. And I think it's because the setup's slightly different. You know, Martins are effectively, there's a lot of handmade stuff still going on. They're dovetail fitted neck joints. There's little things here and there. It's important that you, you know, buy a guitar, discuss things with people. You might need adjustments made for your liking. I can sure, I, I'm sure I could get this guitar nailed down to where I like it, but out of the cases today, I had, I was more comfortable playing that guitar. I had more fun playing that guitar. And I'll give you a little tip when it comes to a hardwood top guitar, like any mahogany top guitar, that one included. Uh, Mid-range and, and compression covers up a, a multitude of sins. <laughs> And so if you, uh, if you are a little heavy handed, uh, it will even all of that out. Um, if you make some mistakes, it covers all of that really, <laughs> really well. If you play electric guitar, by the way, uh, mid boost does the same thing. <laughs> Throw some, some delay and distortion on, covers a multitude of sins. So ham-fisted guitarist uh, 101, so. Uh, but mm. which was kind of surprising. I've always loved the 15 series. I, I continue to say they are the probably the best value in acoustic guitars. Just it's because, high well, I mean, yeah. they, they, under two grand, and you get what you get. It's yeah. just amazing. 
Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, but I love the 16 series still. Set up on this guitar, I'd, this would probably be the, the most versatile go-to option out of the two. So, tough choices, hey, first world problems, but uh, that's what my take is. Any more thoughts? No, I, I like them both. I was definitely, uh, like I said, recently I've been digging the 16s, been pleasantly surprised. I don't want to like this because I don't like things that look factory relict most of the time. But the great thing is if you just, if it falls over, you, the you, can you tell? That. Yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> um, but I do, I like the vibe of this guitar. It feels really yeah. good. And I think you're probably right that this, I mean, it just feels super comfortable to play. And there's some, it is one of those rare guitars that will like kind of push you to play a certain way and inspire you for a certain style, which is pretty cool. Yeah, if I if I had the money between the two right now, as of today, playing both of them, I would probably buy that one and take the three hundred dollar difference and put a pickup in it. That's that's a good call. So, yeah. anyways, like to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Which one did you prefer the tone of? And given your playing style, what would you gravitate to? I think every time I pick that up, I'd play blues. Yeah, and that's and that's just how it would go. And at the end of the day, the very best guitar in the world is the one that you pick up and play blues on. So that's true. There you have it. Anyways, if you're new to our channel, this is what we do, guitar reviews, our opinions, and we're always right. So if you'd like to hear more of that, make sure that you hit subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos, and check out the link to become an Alamo Music Insider. And Cooper, we'll see them next time, right? We'll see you next time.